I am not standing here because I am so handsome, such a genius. <laughs> but I'm here today because of people, several people's pursuit for equality for all people. Imagine me not being able to, not being able to attend the school because of the color of my skin. Imagine not being look, look around. Imagine not being able to see Jaquan Sickers or Brandon Cherry on the football field. To feel Eric Simmons' kindness, to hear Rob Weiss' music, or to see Anthony Rhodes try to steal your food from your advisory. <laughs> Think how your life would be different if you hadn't met me or any other African American student here at Yale. I am here today to acknowledge and thank several people for the opportunity to stand in front of you as a senior at Yale. First, I would like to thank Maurice Ross, who is a civil rights worker in Baltimore who created an organization called Train Now for Tomorrow, or TNT. Your organization was responsible for integrating Baltimore's private school system. She gave many scholarships to African American students to attend private schools. Second, I want to thank my grandfather, Reverend Mary Bassett. My grandfather was a pastor of the Douglas Memorial Community Church for 47 years and was very, it was very involved in the civil rights movement here in Baltimore. He had the opportunity to meet at March with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I also, I also want to thank Mr. Jack Williams, who was Boys Lives Headmaster from 1962 to 1978. My grandfather tells me that Mr. Williams was very tall in character, though not in terms of height. Mr. Williams housed, housed a student from Alabama who had won a scholarship to attend our school in 1967. He believed that he had the same, the same idea that he would be able to achieve here, here at Yale. Mr. Williams and my grandfather began working together to integrate BL. As a result, in September 1966, my uncle, Mary Curtis Baskin Jr., became the first African American student in the sixth grade at BL. He had to go alone for an entire year. My uncle Peter followed him in September 1967. My grandfather gathered other young men who lived in the neighborhood to fill in African American students in each grade. My uncle Mary's first experience with discrimination not from students or parents, but during a class trip to the Mount Washington ice skating rink in 1967. When the class entered the rink and the owner spotted him in the crowd, he immediately informed the teachers that he did not allow blacks in his establishment. Mr. Gelson, my uncle's teacher at the time, got all the kids back on the bus and went back to Yale. He told Mr. Williams about this, and he told the owner of the rink that Yale would not be doing business with him any longer. He persuaded other private schools to do the same. After he told them that, the brink decided to let Uncle Mario escape with his classmates, though I don't think he learned how to skate. <laughs> My Uncle Pete told me while attending Yale, they were never made to feel unwelcome by most students, but were still bullied. One story comes to mind in particular. There was this one kid who would take my uncle's lunch every day. So he and Uncle Pete came up with a plan. They decided to make the bully a special sandwich, not with ham or peanut butter and jelly, but instead, we can help raise some dog food. <laughs> the next day at school, when the boy took my uncle's lunch, they watched him eat the entire sandwich. <laughs> the kids later went to the nurse and left and went home. After that situation, the boy never took his lunch again. Both of them made, made friends at BL. My uncle Pete's closest friends included Ryan Beckenheimer, Mr. Duncan Smith, Brian Smith's dad, Mr. James Curry, head of the missions, and Mayor Williams, the son of Penn Master Williams. Mr. Smith rolled my uncles to school some days. Unlike my uncle Mario, Peter was very athletic. He was the first African-American quarterback, the first African-American co-captain of the varsity wrestling team as a freshman, and the first African-American captain of the cross team. He eventually got a full scholarship to attend Johns Hopkins to play, play the cross. My uncles told me they made friends they will never forget. They were all brothers to, to them. Just like all the students in my class were like brothers to me. Unfortunately, my uncle died in 2006 from complications from quintuple bypass surgery. This was the biggest trash of my life so far because my uncle and I were very close. Unfortunately, he passed away before I became a student here at Yale. I hope that he is proud of me and knows that he paved the way for me to be able to attend this school. At this middle, there were many family and friends. Though unknown to me, many members of his graduating class in 1973 attended to pay their final respect. After the funeral, his class made money to the school in his name. In his memory, I have, I have a cross engraved in my class like that today.
I can only hope he's looking down on me every day, okay? 